Jesus Christ I think upon your sacrifice You became nothing Poured out to death Many times I wondered at your gift of life I'm in that place once again I'm in that place once again Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Now you are Salted to the highest place King of the heavens One day I'll bow But for now I marvel at your saving grace I'm full of praise once again I'm full of praise once again Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross, my friend Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross, my friend Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life So Jesus was sent as a substitute to the cross. You know, when these are days of the football season is going on. And we see that, you know, whenever one of the players are tired, whenever one of the players are not able to really run through the field, the, the coach actually calls them to be substituted. Instead of that person, another person comes onto the field and he continues the game. So that's what a substitute is. And God sent Jesus as our substitute to the cross. If Jesus had not gone to the cross, we would all have to pay with our lives. We would have to pay for our sins with our lives. And God made this provision that you and I don't have to pay for it ourselves. Jesus paid on your behalf and my behalf. That's what substitute is. That's why, you know, not only during Christmas, we need him all the time. We need him in our lives. We need his forgiveness. We need his guidance every day in our lives. Let's sing the song which says, Lord, I need you. Lord, I come. I confess. Bowing him, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense 
my righteousness oh god how i need you sin runs deep your grace is more grace is found is where you are where you are lord i am free holiness is Christ in me Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you Teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way When I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Yeah yeah Lord I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Let's pray Heavenly Father, we need you more than ever today We need your presence, we need your guidance And we need your power, O oh Lord, to live this life here on earth Without you, we can do nothing Scripture says that man is helpless without God's help Man can never save himself without God's help. Man can never live a life that God has planned for him without God's help. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand that we are dependent upon you more and more each day, O oh Lord Father. As we study the scriptures, help us to understand that it is the scriptures that are making us stronger. It is the scriptures that are making us joyful, complete. Without the scriptures, we would be completely lost. Thank you, O Lord, for the Bible that you've given us and the privilege that you've given us to study it. Help us to apply it daily in our lives so that we may live a life that is according to your plan. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Right. Okay. So let's go in to Luke's Gospel. Everybody's got their Bibles? Let's see your Bibles. My Bible is blue in color. This is my Bible. Blue Bibles? My Bible is digital. Uh, this digital is a Bible? laptop. A laptop. What color? What no. color, please? Uh, app. App. App color. Okay. The, uh, Abigail has got... What color is the Bible? That looks very colorful. Black Bible. Black Bible. Samuel's got black Bible. Abigail, yours looks very colorful. No, it's what not in the inside. Oh, only on the outside it looks colorful. <laughs> inside is very much simple. Rohan, what color is your Bible? Digital. Digital Bible. Okay. Open your digital Bibles and your real Bible. Bibles. Bible. Bible. Ah, oh, tiny Bible. Abraham, that's really tiny. Can you read that? Is it big enough? Yeah, I can read that. I can barely read that. Yeah, it's too tiny. I can't see the font also. I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I can see. When you zoom in like that, I can see. Where's my glasses? Oh, okay. <laughs> Joan, I think you're the only one who can read that. All right. So we are in Luke chapter 17. I think so. Is it? Yeah. Correct. Luke chapter 17. Yes. Luke chapter 17. Sometimes I can't search. You can't search? 
can you hear me? Yes, can Abigail. Can you I hear can... me? I can hear you crystal clear. Sometimes I can't. I can't hear you sometimes because my network is a little low. Ah, then you can always uh, lift up your hand. It's Luke and... chapter seventeen, right? Yes. I'll put it in the chat box also so that you you can find it. L U K E, Luke chapter seventeen, and verses twenty two. Um, I think it is thirty seven. Twenty to thirty seven. All right. Okay, Luke chapter seventeen, verses twenty to thirty seven. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, "The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, 'See here or see there.' For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you." Then he said to the disciples, "The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it, and they will say to you, 'Look here or look there.'" Do not go after them or follow them, for as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? In that day, he who is who is on the house top and his goods are in the house, let him not go down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife: whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed; one will be taken, and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, "Where, Lord?" So he said to them, "Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together." Okay, strange words coming from Jesus. He is talking about. The future. Okay, he's talking about the future towards that. But let's look at the first part. He's not talking about the future in the beginning, but then later on he starts talking about the future. So when Jesus was teaching um, in this place where he was, you know uh, that uh, lepers were healed. You know, in the, in the near a village. So that's actually near um, Jerusalem. He was passing through Samaria. Somewhere in that region, some Pharisees came to him and they were complaining, "Hey, hey, hey! If you are the Messiah, then the kingdom of God should be here. You should be the Messiah. I mean, Messiah is the king of the kingdom of God. So, if you are the Messiah, how come the kingdom is not here? See, so you should stop talking big things, Jesus. You know why? Because the kingdom, I can't see the kingdom anywhere. So, if you are the Messiah," The kingdom should have been here. See, so they did not believe Jesus at all. You no, know, the Pharisees did not believe in Jesus at all, and they, they, when they looked around, the kingdom of God is not there. See, what do they associate with the kingdom of God? They think that the kingdom of God is when the Jew rules his own country, and the Romans who are ruling over them, they are thrown out of their country. You know, so the Jew becomes free in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, God is the king. You see, so why is the why is Caesar? Why are the Romans still ruling over us? So that's the question this man is asking. The Pharisees are irritated because they are not able to see 
God ruling. Instead, they are seeing all kinds of people ruling. They are not able to see God ruling. So, what does Jesus say? The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Okay, now observation means even if you carefully look, you are not going to find the kingdom of God. Why? Because the kingdom of God is among you. It is in your hearts. It is not a physical kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. You see. So, Pharisee was thinking that okay, I'm going to have a kingdom like how David was ruling over a kingdom. I'm going to have a castle, and I'm going to have a king sitting on a throne right now. And Jesus said, No, no, that's not the way the kingdom of God comes. That will come. You know, the kingdom will come. The throne will come. That's all later. But now, where is the kingdom? It's in people's hearts. Wherever the king is, that is where the kingdom is. So who is the king? Jesus is the king. You see. So Jesus being the king, wherever he goes, the kingdom is going with him. Whoever believes in Jesus is already part of that kingdom because it's a spiritual kingdom. See, you don't have to take membership in the kingdom. You don't have to get take citizenship in the kingdom like how you take passport for a country, like you take Aadhaar card for your India. You don't have to take like that. The only identity that you need is put your faith in Jesus Christ. Consider him as the king of your life. If you believe that Jesus is the king of your life, then that is all that is needed. You are already a citizen of the kingdom of God. So Jesus is saying, you can't observe and find the kingdom of God. Okay, you can't carefully look here and there and think that okay, it's a physical structure. It is not. It's a spiritual kingdom. So then he said to his disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see. What is he saying? So he's talking suddenly about the future. He's saying, you know, <clears throat> Jesus is going to leave the earth soon. He's going to go up to heaven. Then he's going to come after a long gap. So at that time, after Jesus goes, they're going to search for the kingdom. They're going to search for the king, and they are going to find it among them. See, so you will desire to see him. See, you will say, "Oh, I wish Jesus was with me. I wish his kingdom was with us." But at that time. You won't be able to see me physically. I won't be present with you. But then, how will I be present? He says, "The days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, 'Look here and look there. Do not go after them.' See, so people will come to trick you to say that, 'Hey, the kingdom of God is, you know, where? Um, right there, you know, in Cochin. Ah, you're there in Cochin, and everybody will run to Cochin. Okay, somebody will say, 'No, no, 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 kingdom of God is not in Cochin. It is in Bangalore. So everybody will run to Bangalore.'" No? So Jesus is saying, "Hey, don't get deceived. You know, Satan is Jesus' enemy, and he's very crafty uh, in disguising. You know, he can disguise himself as the angel of light. He can disguise himself as a very holy person. You know, very uh, you know uh, person who knows the word of God. So that uh, that is actually cunning and deception. He says, don't believe in people who say that. Okay, the kingdom of God is there." A kingdom of God is in that church. A kingdom of God is in this place. Don't believe that. Kingdom of God should be in your heart. If Jesus lives in your heart, if He is the Messiah of your life, if He is the King of your life, then the kingdom lives in your heart and my heart. So don't go after following those people who claim that hey, the kingdom is there, or kingdom is here, kingdom is in USA, or kingdom is in UK, kingdom is in Africa. Don't follow all these people. Okay. Now, why did Jesus say that? You know, just after Jesus left the earth, people started coming, claiming that they are Messiah. They are the real Messiah. They are the Messiah. Believe in us. We are the you know sent one from God. But Jesus proved it with his miracles. Jesus proved it with his words and action. But these men, they could not, they could not do anything like that. But they claimed to be the Messiahs. You know. So somebody actually counted the number of times people called themselves the Messiah throughout history after Jesus' time, and they found out there were at least at least sixty-four people who came after Jesus who claimed to be the Messiah. They were all fakes. They were all frauds. There was this man called David Koresh. He was a dangerous man. You know, he claimed that he is the Messiah. He is Jesus. And then a lot of people, you know, they they left their churches and they started following David Koresh. And one day, David Koresh told them, "If you want to go to heaven, you have to kill yourself." And all these followers of David Koresh they killed themselves. 
david courage also you know he was caught by the police and he was sent to jail he died in jail okay there was another person called jim jones who wanted to bring the kingdom of god to california and his kingdom of god was full of drugs and alcohol american police chased him out of america and he went to africa he brought a whole town you know with his money he bought a whole town um, and made people there believe that you know he is jesus and that uh, he was building the kingdom of god in africa these are all fakes and jim jones died and all his followers they committed suicide see so there are so many people who are fakes who calls either themselves jesus or calls themselves messiahs and they came to free people you know they said i'll make you free i'll give you the kingdom of god and people followed those people and they all died they all were deceived they all were tricked they lost their property they lost their money they lost their lives following these crazy people you no know? so jesus says he's warning the people there will be other people who come and tell you that you know i am the messiah i am the messiah don't believe in that then he says when the son of man comes what happens it will be like the lightning flashes see when you are at home in the evening time or night time when the lightning happens no even if you have light in your room you can see the lightning from outside you know in a dark clouded sky anywhere you know when you see the sky if the lightning flashes people will be able to see it jesus says it there will not be any doubt about jesus is coming it will be it will be seen like a lightning flashing in the sky everybody will know that jesus is, has come see so you don't have to keep following people to cochin or you know bangalore or uh, anywhere delhi or anywhere you will know in trivandrum itself that jesus has come because it will be like a flash of lightning in the sky on his day it will be like a flash of lightning in the sky everybody in all corners of the earth will know that jesus has come that's how his his day is going to be but he says hey but before that what should happen i must suffer many things i must suffer many things jesus had to suffer and die on the cross see so you can't skip the cross and go directly to the kingdom of god that's not possible the kingdom of god comes only after suffering only after jesus going through the pain why did he have to go through the pain he never committed any sin he never committed any evil thing but he went to the cross because of your sin and my sin because we sinned our sin was placed on jesus and jesus became our substitute and went to the cross as we said you know earlier when we were singing so he became my substitute he became your substitute anyone who believes in jesus that jesus was an innocent man and he died for my sins on the cross to that person his sins are forgiven see all his sins are forgiven forever so which means all i have to do is put my faith in jesus christ and then i will be forgiven all my yeah. sins will be forgiven yeah. yes rohan um, who's that is is this uh, it's abram ha ah, abram tell me if jesus died on the cross i mean like how why does jesus have to die, die on the cross uh, cross for our sins ha huh. let me explain that see in the old testament um, god created man higher than all the animals you know no no god, because at that time you were born right yes you you were not born i was not born none of us were there but mankind was there you know just like how we exist now mankind was there also so when adam sinned also i was not there it actually happened in the garden of eden man sinned but adam was the representative of all mankind so when adam sinned we were there inside adam you know so all of mankind sinned with adam okay now you might say hey if i was there in eden i would not have done that no given the opportunity you and i will behave the same way like how adam behaved that is why we we call it human nature you know so adam sinned adam was my representative if adam has sinned then i'm i'm also born in sin i would do only the things that adam would have done given no matter how many choices i get so the same thing happened when jesus came he died for all the way from adam till the day the last person dies you know every mankind for their sin jesus went to the cross 
how did god solve this problem i will explain this see in those days god said for adam's sin god prescribed god said in adam's place you have to offer a sacrifice okay so they find a sheep which has no fault a good healthy sheep and they bring the sheep to the altar and this person who has committed the sin okay i will come there and i will put my hand on top of the head of the sheep and i will say transfer all my sins onto this innocent lamb and so the all my sins would be transferred to the the lamb the sheep and then the sheep would be its neck would be cut it would be killed and then the blood of the sheep would be offered as a sacrifice so when god looks at the blood you know he says uh, the the wages of sin is death so if i have committed sin then i should actually die my sin, my blood should be poured out on the altar but if i pour out my blood on the altar then i will not be alive no i'll be dead so instead of me dying god said okay this is the solution bring a lamb transfer your sins onto the lamb by placing your hand on the head of the lamb and then let the lamb die in your place so when the blood is shed god's anger would be comforted god's anger would be justified he said god would say okay okay fine blood has been shed it is not human blood it's lamb's blood but god said that's enough i don't want to kill that person so that person is gone forgiven because the blood has been shed now so the problem yeah how did everybody practice this like this uh, like killing lambs to um, appease their sins like everybody practiced it in those times yes everybody had to practice it during those times if you don't do that then your sin rem- remains on you so if you die you will be punished for the sins that you have committed so if you ask for forgiveness god would forgive your sin but the problem is people saw this as an excuse to sin more and more okay so they would go back after committing the sacrifice after giving this blood of the lamb they would go back and they would check how many lambs do i have if i have nine more lambs then i how many times can i sin i can sin the same sin nine more times each time i sin i will bring a lamb kill the lamb and say lord forgive me and lord would say okay okay and then i would go back and do the same thing again i will sin again bring another lamb so they found this as an but, excuse to keep on sinning yes abigail but god can read their minds and know oh, what god they are yes, exactly so god got angry with them forgive them god got angry with them and god said i don't want your bulls i don't want your sheep i don't want the blood of these innocent animals because you guys are taking advantage of the provision that i've given i've given you a provision that in case you do sin you can be forgiven but you have misused my provision and you take an advantage of it by killing all these innocent lambs so this has to stop you know the animals have to be stopped so god said okay once and for all now i am going to provide the lamb the lamb will be perfect he'll be without sin and the lamb will be sacrificed once and for all that's it then no more sacrifices and that actually was a human being that's why jesus is coming to the earth is so important for us because man cannot find the perfect sacrifice because man cannot you know uh, man is going to have this problem of sin always even after he offered for sacrifice god had to one sin for all deal with it by sending his perfect lamb jesus christ so jesus came sin he lived sinless 33 years he lived among us he did not sin even once so he kept the law perfectly he was the innocent lamb and this lamb had to die in your place and my place so six times so, yes yes abhi for people had no sympathy for animals of course yes god had sympathy for animals god said i am tired of you guys uh, taking advantage of this situation and killing all these innocent animals it is your heart that i want changed see so the animals you know the blood of the animals don't have the power to change me or change the sinner you see so I, my purpose is i want to sin more and more but the blood of jesus is not like that it is very very powerful it can actually solve the sin problem inside me once and for all the sin problem from inside my heart can be removed so i will not you know it's not like i won't sin again but the effect of sin in my life will not be there so god does not need jesus to die again and again jesus has to die only once 
but that one time he took all the sins of all mankind upon himself and then he died on the cross so that all the people right from history all the people right down to to the future everybody's sins would be once and for all forgiven okay so your sins are forgiven my sins are forgiven abraham's sins are forgiven joanne's sins are forgiven samuel's sins are forgiven rowan's sins are forgiven but it is only given to you when you receive it okay it's like a gift okay so i'm saying like all right i'm going to give this gift um what can i give as a gift okay i'm going to give this mobile phone as a gift to joanne right i'm going to give this free gift to joanne and joanne says i don't want your gift lousy phone you got you know so when she says that you know i say but joan it's a good phone and it's good for you i can always communicate with you i can but she says no 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 i don't i don't i don't want your free gift so i have given the phone to her but she is not going to receive it means it is gone it's gone so because joan didn't receive it her loss i have given it for everyone so samuel receives it he gets it abraham receives it he gets it you receive it you get it but those who reject it they will not get it so god has died for all people he has forgiven his power his blood has been shed for all people everybody can be forgiven if they receive jesus into their hearts as their savior if they don't receive jesus if they don't believe in jesus that that cannot save them you get what i'm saying it's like this two people you know they were going on a train journey together one person was the owner of a soap factory he he makes uh, sanitizers and soaps and all those things he he's got a factory of that and he was traveling in the train and with him was a christian preacher you know a preacher was there and his young daughter was there tiny daughter just like you know abigail's youngest sister right a tiny girl was there this tiny girl was sitting on the floor of the train and she was playing with her toys and you know the floor of the train is a dirty place okay so all the dirt from the train it was actually coming on her hands and her face and her dress and all that but she was playing so she was so involved in the playing with the toys so suddenly this man you know this uh, uh, fellow who has the factory he looked at the preacher and he said what do you do so i'm a preacher i teach the word of god to people i tell them about god's great plan of salvation forgiveness of sins so this man said i don't think you're preaching your word of god the bible is effective because see not many people are receiving jesus not many people are receiving his forgiveness so your bible is not at all effective he said your preaching is not at all effective your bible is not powerful he said so this man said i can say the same thing about you i think your soap the soap that you're making in your factory it's not powerful at all it will not clean my daughter of the dirt see my daughter she's fully covered in dirt your soap does not clean my daughter also so this man said but your daughter has not used my soap if you use my soap the daughter will be clean he said yeah exactly you see to those who have used him those who have accepted him received him for those people jesus works his forgiveness works salvation works but if you have not received him that is like rejecting him you see so joanne says i don't want the gift which means she has rejected my offer same is for everyone who rejected jesus on the cross he said i don't want somebody else to die for me i can do it by myself i can get my own forgiveness i don't want some innocent person to die for me or somebody will say okay i i don't mind getting punished for what i did i don't want another person to get punished for that god says there is no other way no other way that your sins will be forgiven no other way that you can be saved unless through jesus christ and that is the sad thing so many many people are not understanding that their sins are already forgiven many people are not able to understand that jesus has died once and for all for all their sin so they go if they die today they will end up in the in front of the judgment seat of god and god is going to send them to hell not because of some sin they have done but because they did not believe in jesus christ you see that's the biggest sin of all that's the only sin of all that matters if you don't believe in jesus christ then god says there is no other way you can be saved there is no other way you can be forgiven 
and that is tragedy okay you are not going to hell for the sins that you did for the murder you committed you know for the lies that you spoke no you're not going to hell for that you're only going to hell because you did not receive god's perfect gift into your life what about atheists and people yeah atheists are people who don't receive god who don't even believe that god exists so uh, you know it's like uh, ah. you okay i'll give you one more example say i go to a bank i want to take a loan from the bank okay i'm going to the best bank in the comp- in the uh, uh, in the city and i'm asking them uh, can you tell me the rules for how i can take a loan from your bank so this man says yes i can give you 5 lakh rupees and you have to pay back every month you have to pay back 20000 rupees for the next 5 years you have to pay back 20000 rupees that's how we'll take the loan back okay so these are the conditions for the loan so i'd look at the bank manager and i tell him no 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 i want more than that i want 1 crore rupees and i will pay you only 5000 rupees every month yeah i'm not able to pay 20000 30000 i'll pay only 5000 rupees every month and i will pay it back only in 40 50 years then the manager of the bank will tell me that you go and do in your bank this is our bank our bank has got the rules we make the rules if you want to come and get the loan from our bank you have to follow our terms and conditions okay the same thing applies to god also god the one who created the universe set his rules into place so whether it is an atheist or a buddhist it doesn't matter they have to understand that the god the creator of the universe had set these rules in place so i have to come according to his terms what are his terms his term is only one term what is that believe in jesus christ and you will be saved no other way that a person under heaven can be saved but by the forgiving blood of jesus christ and if you don't believe in it that's your loss that's what god says that's your loss god weeps for you but he says that's your loss because god has made a provision for man to be saved and if you are not using the provision it is because of your unbelief if you are not willing to believe in that so god says no other. you know there are some people who don't believe in the gravitational force they don't believe in that but if they jump from the third floor of a building will the gravitational force act on them definitely right it will whether they like it or not the rules apply to them they'll say i don't believe in gravitational force and they will jump yeah do they will die <laughs> and they will at least break, break their legs if they fall down so same thing applies to everybody even if an atheist says i don't believe in god and he will die same rule applies to him just because he doesn't believe in it doesn't mean god's law is not in existence god's command doesn't exist so this is the simple truth if you believe in jesus christ that he died as your substitute you believe that you know if you believe in him you have forgiveness of sins in him then that's all that god is looking for he will immediately save you he'll forgive your sins and in that flash of a moment you become a new creation you become a child of god that's all that's required so because we don't have anything to do people think that oh that's so easy why would anybody you know uh, do that why do why would just that's all you know i want to do that and do something more and god says no nothing more you can't be trusted with anything so god says i will do the whole thing you just have to believe it because it is so simple people reject it say we don't want it all you have to do is believe in jesus that i don't want it jesus says i have to suffer i have to die i should be rejected you see so our generation when we present this gospel the simple truth is this, i don't want to believe in this it's too easy nobody is going to be saved that easy who said bible says it is so easy all you have to do is believe believe in him and you will be saved all right any questions on that <coughs> no yes. absolutely no okay yes so everybody understood this simple concept see the the tragedy is young children like you are able to understand the simple truth but grown up people you know when i i i shared this truth um, to a colony of people today and more than 50% of them they did not understand anything what i said 
I said, I did, I said these same stories I said there also. I said, it is so simple. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and you will be saved. Your sins will be forgiven. And they said, nah, you don't want that. I know they have this ritual where for their sins, they will beat a whip on their own back. They will put nails through their own cheeks. They don't mind all that. They, they don't mind walking on top of uh, you know, uh, fire uh, with their bare legs. So they'll get you know, roasted on the underside of their feet. Um, they'll walk on charcoal, burning charcoal. They will do all that you know, as forgiveness for this. They want to gain forgiveness for their sins. They said, that's okay. We would like to do it that way. So God says, there are only two ways you can, you can enter into my heaven, into the eternal kingdom of God. There are only two ways. One is through Jesus Christ, easy way. The other one is the hard way. And that is by your perfect life. Live a perfect life and you can enter into heaven. But the sad thing is none of us can live a perfect, sinless life. Either at least in our words, at least in our thoughts, we will commit sin. If you have even committed one sin, you have broken all God's commandments. And that's why with our own effort, you can never make it to heaven. Nobody can make it to heaven. We are all sinful people. We can never make it to heaven on our own. That's why God sent Jesus to us, you see. So he made it, he died on the cross so that you and I have a chance of getting into heaven. And that chance is an easy chance. All you have to do is believe in him and you will be forgiven and you will be there with him eternally. That's the good news. That's the message of the Christmas also. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Because Jesus came down so that he came down to die actually. All right. So how many of you want to receive the gift? Not my mobile phone. Me, me. <laughs> okay. I'm not me, giving my mobile me, phone. <laughs> yes. All right. Me. So all it takes Same. is a small prayer, right? So I'm going to pray this prayer. You can mute yourself and you can pray this in your heart, right? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to the cross as my substitute. I believe that Jesus was sinless. It was not for his sins that he went to the cross. I put my trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for me. I pray that you would forgive all my sins. Lord, I truly repent and I want to turn from my evil, wicked ways. I don't want to sin again and again. I want to live a life that is pleasing to you, O oh Master. Be the Lord of my life. Be the King of my life. Help me to be a part of this kingdom of God. To be a child of God. Forgive my sins. And make me a new creation. I pray and ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.